I think it's really important to understand mechanism of action. Because if I tell you meat correlates to cancer, I need to tell you why. And there's a lot of reasons why. We know right down to the cellular detail why meat could cause cancer, why meat causes heart disease, why meat causes hypertension, and it's all kinds of different things. And so let me give you an example of how we prove a point. Prostate cancer. The health profession study at Harvard followed doctors um, 47,781 doctors for many years, and they looked at those getting two servings of milk had a substantially higher risk of prostate cancer. Now, this is a correlation study, okay? We know that America leads the world in prostate cancer. We know that Japan has almost no prostate cancer, but if Japanese come to America, they get prostate cancer. They don't eat much meat or dairy in, in Japan at all. So now let's do a randomized controlled trial. Let's take a group of people. We've got an idea. And by the way, we know the mechanism of action. The mechanism of action is because um, animal protein r raises a hormone in your body called IGF-1, and we know that IGF-1 is associated with prostate cancer. So we have a mechanism of action. We have epidemiologic data. Let's put it to the test. So Dr. Ornish took a group of people that had high PSAs and evidence of prostate cancer, but early stage. Half the group didn't want to do anything. Half the group did a vegan diet. They did a lifestyle change. They did meditation and things like that. Um, but they did vegan diet. And if you look at it, look at the PSA values of the group that didn't do anything. It went up. They had to go and get treatment. Their cancer got worse. Look at the vegan group. It got better. And he didn't just stop there. He actually took their blood out and dripped it on cells, on prostate cancer cells. And he found that the people that were vegan, their blood killed um, cancer cells eight times better than the group that wasn't on a vegan diet. And he went even further. He looked at the telomeres, which are the chromosomes, our chromosomes. And it's the end of the chromosomes, and it protects the chromosomes. And he looked at that and showed that the telomeres actually get longer. I mean, this is pretty good, right? We got epidemiologic data. We've got data that shows mechanism of action, and we've got this unbelievable prospective randomized trial. That's how you prove a point. No one study proves anything, but you take this all together, and where there's smoke, there's fire. And there's been many other studies out there, nurses' health studies, things like that, where they concluded that the effect of, a, of decreasing meat in your diet was as powerful as statins without the adverse effects and costs as powerful as statin, our number one drug that we give out. In fact, when you look at heart disease, uh, you know, some people think a plant-based whole food diet is extreme. Half a million people a year will have their chest ripped open, veins taken out and put in there. We don't call that extreme. Believe me, I've seen it. It's extreme. When, in fact, all you need to do is a plant-based diet, so this is Dr. Esselstyn's work, look at that vessel on the right and look at it after a plant-based diet. That is incredible, incredible testament. It's miracle. It's miraculous. We didn't, I didn't know this was possible when I was in medical school. And so Dr. Esselstyn concluded that what keeps him on fire, which keeps me on fire, is that we have an epidemic of disease in this country that doesn't need to exist. It's so easy to turn it around. I see it on a daily basis. But you have heart failure. Well, at least I'm not dying of protein deficiency like those vegan hippies. <laughs> which is uh, a lot of things that I see. Now, I give these talks to doctors, and, um, and, and what I find is um, that they really don't seem to understand this disease process at all. They look at me like I'm crazy. Um, they say, you know, I went to the American Society of Bariatric Physicians, and they're teaching people low-carb diets. And this is an example of the diet that they give for weight loss to their patients. Eggs and bacon, chicken Caesar salad, Snacks, olives, ste steak with blue cheese, really, seriously. It drives me crazy because, you know, obesity is a death sentence and they're giving people the food that my patients are eating to become overweight to begin with. 